That is, new developments are not being adopted at subsistence level. And then number six, disadvantage. Animal rearing is purely extensive. That is, the rearing of animals, you leave your uh, animal to roam around, find uh, means of its existence. The poor variety of seeds and breeds of animals are used. They will now come to commercial agriculture. In commercial agriculture, the farmer cultivates large acreage, hectares of land, make use of agricultural machineries, and also they make use of improved varieties of seeds and breeds of animals so that they can produce at commercial level to the point that they have enough to sell. And even so, after selling to the immediate environment, they have access to exports and then at commercial level the quality of production is always high also fertilizers are decided fungicides and insecticides and improved inputs are, are being made use of to improve production in commercial agriculture in commercial agriculture cash crops such as cocoa that is cocoa being used in production of beverages rubber oil palm coffee, tea, banana, and other primary tree crops are cultivated on large scale. It may also involve the cultivation of variable crops like uh, rice, maize, beans, cassava, yam, soya beans, millet, sorghum, on large scale. So that you can have just like uh, Nigeria imports. Also, in commercial farming, animals are usually bred intensively in large numbers for the production of livestock products which are in high demand. That is, they, uh, when they are in commercial farming, rearing of animals is being enclosed. That is, you don't allow your animals to roam around and then find what you eat. You provide what they, the shelter, the food, the water they need within an enclosure. They are not being allowed to roam around. And what are the advantages of commercial agriculture? Large quantities of high quality products is being achieved. Serve as good source of income for the farmer. Three, serve as a source of foreign exchange for the country. Then, production of cash crops and food crops is in large quantity. Then, the fifth one can be easily mechanized that is, mechanization is adopted. Then, the scope of production can be expanded, expanded making, by making use of improved techniques, modern machinery, cultivation of improved high yield, high yielding variety and rearing of improved breeds. But it has no both disadvantages of commercial agriculture. The cost of production is relatively high. For you to get tractor is costly compared to using uh, the use of uh, the cost, what it will cost you in getting a cutlass or a hoe. It's only God that knows the uh, numbers of Cutlass that you, you you that you can use uh, that the the number of cutlasses you buy from the cost it's, uh, that we, from what it will cost you in getting the tractor then it requires it requires expertise you have to know the know you are you need the knowledge and then the know how of how to engage in commercial agriculture. Then, what are the differences between subsistence agriculture and uh, commercial agriculture? The first one is that the family members serve a source of labor, whereas in commercial agriculture, there's need of hiring of labor. Then, number two, production under subsistence agriculture, uh, production is on a small scale, while in commercial agriculture, uh, production is on a large scale and is of high quality. Production in sustainable level might be of high quality and might be of low quality. But in commercial agriculture, it must always be of high quality because for you to export, it, you, there are some standards that it has to uh, attain. Then, three, small piece of land is required. But for commercial agriculture, large hectares of land is required. Then number four, rearing of animals is done majorly extensively, but under commercial agriculture, rearing of animals is majorly, majorly done intensively. 
The fifth difference is it serves our commercial agriculture, under commercial agriculture, served majorly as a source of food for the farmer and his family, and rarely as a source of income. As a serve, hey, that is called subsistence agriculture, rarely serve a source of income for the farmer. But under commercial agriculture, our commercial agriculture uh, serves a source of income for the farmer, and then uh, subsistence agriculture does not serve a source of foreign exchange, but commercial agriculture serves a source of foreign exchange. The seventh one is primitive, old, and crude cultural practice and abuse are adopted and used. But under commercial agriculture, we have improved cultural practices and abuse are adopted and used. Then over eight, crude tools such as cutlasses or axes are used. But under commercial agriculture, we have agricultural machineries uh, being used. With that, we come to the end of subsistence and commercial agriculture. Now we'll be going to the role of our government in agricultural development, just as we are having here. Agricultural used to be the mainstay of the economy in Nigeria, but the advent and discovery of petroleum brought about the neglect of agriculture. Thus, food production reduced drastically to the point that a lot of money was spent on importing food from other countries to meet the food need of the citizen. That is, when uh, we, Nigeria actually experienced the oil boom, uh, the uh, agriculture was being ne neglected. The cocoa from the southwest was being neglected. The uh, granite pyramid in the north was being neglected. And then the rubber, the palm oil in the south, south, and southeast also was being neglected. And that actually reduced the foreign exchange that Nigeria was earning from agricultural produce. And uh, to safeguard the situation and provide food security, the government has actually devised some programs. Uh, these programs include agricultural policies, agricultural education, agricultural program, farm settlement scheme, quarantine services, and so on. But we will start, uh, starting with agricultural policy. What is a policy? A policy may be defined as a plan of action or statement of aims and ideas made by the government that, that, is, that are made by the government. Every country has its own agricultural policies. This go, the goals of agricultural policies are the following. Number one, increasing the production of good quality food. Two, impro improving production efficiency of export crops so as to ensure that better foreign exchange, that is, exchange earnings. Then three, the third goal is to provide, that is, the third goal or objective is to provide employment opportunities through establishment of large farms. The fourth goal or objective is to supply essential raw materials to agro-allied industries. That is, all these policies they are making to improve uh, production is to make sure that there's adequate raw materials for agro-allied industry. Then the for a fifth one, fifth objective is mechanize, mechanizing farming activities for increased output and income to farmers. The sixth is to increase the production of livestock so as to supply animal protein in diet and make available livestock products in the market at reduced cost. That is once there's an increase in production all year round there will be animal protein for everybody and uh, the citizens won't be experiencing uh, inadequate diet that is there will be adequate diet there will be animal protein so that there will be adequate diet for the citizenry and then livestock products will be available at uh, reduced cost in the market the, the last uh, objective is uh, to develop and to find lasting solutions to problems related to agricultural, agricultural development through the establishment of research centers which will work on livestock improvement and conservation. The next uh, role of government in agricultural development is the establishment of agricultural programs and plans. 
after the government's policies have been stated, that is, after government and, and made its policies, a program will, have, will be drawn up for successful implementation. That is when, after the government has drawn, uh, has stated its uh, policies, there is need of drawing up a program, drawing up a plan, so that the policies can be successfully implemented. A program is a projection of what is to be done in future, while a plan is the organization of goals, and that means and and the, and the means of attaining them. While doing program planning, it is important to take the social and cultural values and the need of the people into consideration. Some of the government programs for agricultural development are given below. We have the River Basin Development Authority Scheme, we have the Agricultural Development Project Scheme, we have the Green Evolution, we have the subsidies, we have the Farm Settlement Scheme, we have the Hull oil palm planting scheme, we have the cocoa rehabilitation scheme, we have the loan scheme, we have the operation feed emission, rubber planting scheme, and uh, we have the green revolution scheme. Now, I will just explain some of uh, these programs. Um, well, that's just one of the ways, those are the ways, some of the programs that the governments had actually drawn, that uh, the government had actually drafted in developing uh, agriculture. Then we'll be going to uh, we'll take farm settlement as uh, an example. Uh, the farm settlement scheme was launched in the in the defunct in the defunct western region in 1959. It was meant to stop uh, it was meant to stop movement of people from the villages to the cities that is Urban drift, that is, people moving from the farm settlement, moving from the rural area to uh, the urban center. It was also to provide employment for primary and modern school leavers who could not be employed in other industries or commercial establishments. That is, um, it's a means of gener generating employment for graduates, for primary school and uh, modern school leavers there.